Hi there, I'm Andrew Bunnell, and today let's take a look at measurement on using the Mac. So this applet today is um, it's a very cool, it's a very cool applet. It actually teaches a lot about how we measure things. Now, uh, as I download it, I here on a Mac, I just want to show you how to get through the security of a Mac. So here it is right here. You can see I've already downloaded it, but I'm going to download it again. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> the aluminum bar. All right, come on. I just wanted to download it. There we go. Now, when I go to my downloads and try to open it first, it says it can't be identified. And so I hit OK. So now I'm going to go over to my system settings. And I'm going to scroll down to where I find privacy and security. And go all the way down. And now I see that... There's this, um, it was blocked, and I can do open anyways, and then I can use a password, and then um, I type in my password, modify settings, and it says warning, one more time. And so go ahead and hit OK. Now I have my app open. Now the description of this app is, is, um, is really good. If you've ever used a caliper, this system is based on a caliper that can measure digitally, really carefully. This caliper right here that I'm holding is an analog caliper that measures in inches. And let's assume that the it has a digital readout because you're going to be typing in numbers uh, for your, for your uh, length measurements. And then you take a piece of stock metal, which usually comes in like six foot sections and it has a certain thickness maybe it'd be easier with to show you with this rod here's let's say if we had a wooden option on our thing so there's a certain thickness and you can measure it and cut it really carefully but uh, but that um, inner jaw has been moved so that we can have an intercept and so it's still the most precise tool so you would use the most precise tool to, to make your cut but then when you're measuring using the centimeter and the millimeter ruler you're going to determine how well you can do that by measuring different lengths, exact example, different lengths of this cut metal. So make sure you read through this whole thing and make sure you even include uh, the density of aluminum down there. It shows you right here what the proportionality constant is going to be. This 3 8 um, is going to be our offset and 2.54. So we're going to be converting this to a centimeter scale. Don't just calculate. Don't put in the value and calculate it. Remember, there's this offset that we have to see how well we can measure. So coming down to the applet, let me get it in the screen just a little bit. It starts out with 3.5. We can slide the, the thing around by using these, these little bars, and then we can slide it back and forth using it like that. Okay, so at 3.5, I see that there's almost... Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, almost 10, but it's a little bit less than 10. And so you got to guess how well you think you can measure that. So I would say, well, it's a little less than 10, maybe 9.7, 9.6, maybe 9.8, maybe 9.9. And then you have, to, you have to guess how much uncertainty, not the distance between the, the bar and the, the little tick mark, but how much uncertainty there is in your guess. So on the left side, I would say, well, maybe a tenth of a centimeter, maybe a twentieth of a centimeter. And on the right side, I would probably guess the same thing. Let's say I guessed a tenth. You have to do one-tenth on the left side squared plus one-tenth on the right side squared, and then take the square root of that, and that's the square root of 2.14. Same thing if you guess two-tenths on each side, and same thing if you guessed like a half a millimeter on each side. So um, you're going to make a guess for that, and then you're going to click on the fine scale and measure it again. And I'm missing a button right there. Okay, so you actually have to drag it out just a little bit to see this extra button, this mass button. Now the next part says go ahead and change it to 2, and now you're going to do the same thing with 2. And if I'm looking really carefully, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I see six, 6 boxes. But if I look really, really closely, I see that it's just a little bit more than 6. So is it 6.05? If you've taken a chemistry class, you know you can estimate. Go ahead and estimate, but the, the important part is to also write down your uncertainty. How uncertain do you think you're on the left? How uncertain do you think you're on the right? And then you square them and you add them together. Now we're going to take a set of measurements, and 
and I've already taken my measurements to save you some time, and I've already typed them into the, my Excel sheet. So I'm going to switch over to my Excel sheet. Now this is just an example of, of what I measured for the digital length and the error in the length. I forgot to say, oh, you also have to click over to the side, side view and do that measurement as well, or the end. And so I did that, and then you can move the bar up and down, or the end of the bar up and down, and measure how the diameter. And so I've done that right here as well. Now before you end the first uh, part of the procedure, you also have to take um, several mass measurements. And I did my mass measurements at 2.22. You need to do them at 2 so that you can get your own answers. And so I would type down here 2.222 and enter. If it's still yellow, that means you haven't made the change to the, the applet. I'm going to shift over to one side really quick. So when I click mass, it says 69.58. Click it again, 69.60. So you're going to get different numbers. This is like, again, like a really fine analytical scale where you put your regions on the scale and you take it off and then you put it on a second time and, and you close the doors and it gives you a different value. Some scales are more precise so that you can get a smaller value than the, the last digit. And so let me go back to my Excel sheet and show you that I typed in my numbers and I estimated my uncertainty and then there's my measurement for the side view and then there's the given side view. And so I can see that, oh wait, I didn't actually guess that, sorry, 2.23. I guessed 2.23 and I better double check. Is that really the side view? Oops. <laughs> I better check in the procedure really quick. All right. 2.22. Okay. I'm sorry. I typed the numbers a little too fast. My guess was 2.25. And the actual was 2.22. Okay. Over here, I've taken a, a set of measurements when my mass was at 2.222. You're supposed to do them at 2. And then you're supposed to find the standard deviation. So stdev equals stdev parenthesis and just highlight that set, close it off and hit enter. And so that rounds to 0 0.09. And I'm going to decrease my digit back on home to where it's 0 0.09. Oops, wrong way. OK, so great. Now the next step says to create a table. And you're going to take several measurements. Let's see, is this the table? Nope, this is the table. And you're going to take, you're going to type in your digital. You can use 3.5 and 2 if you, again, and you've already taken one measurement. Uh, but the, but the instructions are to go through and take all your rough measurements, okay? And then type in the numbers again, and then take all your fine measurements, and then type in your numbers again, and take all your mass measurements. This will help prevent you from getting the rough and the fine uh, mixed up a little bit, because if you change it from rough to fine, you might see the same number that you just said. So if you, you have to switch through and take the first set, take the second set, and then finally take the last set. And like I said, to save you some time, I've already done that. Now, you're supposed to first fit the rough data. So Command C, and I'm going to paste it over in the, the XC sheet, which I actually already have done. Uh, Command V. So let's just do the fine. Oops. Control Command Z. Now, if you accidentally do something like that, it's okay that um, you change the color. It's um, we're not grading these things really carefully. Um, we're just looking to make sure they're correct and that formulas are in the right spots. So I'm going to go ahead and paste and come down here into paste values. Great. Now my initial guess for my uncertainty was actually 0 0.14. So I'm going to include that and then I'm going to copy it down. Now when you first open up this worksheet, there might be extra values down here. Make sure that this matches these two numbers over here and not those extra values. Go ahead and put the check in, perform regression, scroll down, and it looks like I typed in one of my values wrong. And so I'm going to look at it, and I see 2 is at 0 0.818. Oh, sorry, 2, 2, 2. I see my value for 2 is 7, and that's not what I saw on the, when I was looking at it, was it? So when I go back to 2, So I made a typo and, and wrote down the wrong number. I see there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's actually six boxes, not seven boxes. 
up six. And so I'm going to go fix it on my original sheet too. Six and six. Okay, back to the XE. And now my uncertainty is smaller and my line lines up better. And my residuals look random and scattered. With only six points of data, you should have two outside. Or if you have one a little bit further, maybe just one outside. Now you're going to come over and round your residuals, or round your, your numbers. Uh, it looks like I have too many digits, so I'm going to decrease the digit, decrease the digits, and that's good. Now, like I said from the discussion, it says, or the, the applet, it says the expected is 0 0.95, or you could type in 1 8th divided by, or times it by 2.45, and then the expected slope is 2.54. And don't forget to type in your z-scores here as well. To report it, you'd copy the, the, the graph into your workbook. You would copy this set of uh, data right here into the workbook. Uh, if you copy the top here, then you could edit the table. Maybe some of the some of the words word documents have been having some problems with that. Then you're going to come down here for the next step and see how well you were able to measure the with the find. Oh, but come back one step. I forgot to command C. Forgot to copy this over. Command V. Nope. Uh, command Z. Command Z. And I'm going to go. Uh, click right there, and I'm going to do the paste value. It's been a while since I worked on a Mac, so um, a little bit slow. Okay, great. Now, so how well was I able to, to measure? I guessed 0.14, but I was actually closer to um, 0.6 centimeters, 0 0.06 centimeters. That's really good. All right, so now we're going to make a copy of this, and... Let's see, control click and move or copy. And we're going to make a copy. And then we're going to control click and rename. This next one will be fine. And control click, rename. This one's going to be rough. Okay, so now I can go back to my sheet where I took all my data and just copy over the fine data, command C. And then I can value paste it in the fine column. A little drop down. Oops. Oh. Paste values. There we go. Now, starting out with the uncertainty that I had uh, for my uh, for my um, workbook would have been 0 0.07 is what I first guessed. Copy that down. But as it turns out, my uncertainty was actually quite a bit smaller than that. It was 0 0.015. I go down to the residuals, and yep, they're random and scattered. They look pretty good. Um, sorry if my head was on top of it. <laughs> Command C, and I'm going to click there and paste values. And copy them down. Oops, click. There we go. Now I'm going to go over, and I'm going to round the re round the residual or round the report. Now I need a couple extra digits because of. Let's see, because it has a smaller uncertainty. And there's my z-score. I did a great job. Great. Um, I took measurements, and I did good. Now, if, if by chance your z-scores are really big, that could be because of, um, that could be because of your uncertainty is really small. For example, with this set of data, my uncertainty was not, it was about a tenth of a millimeter. I mean, that's a really accurate measurement, a little bit more than a tenth of a millimeter. And so if you have a really small measurement, but then you're overestimating each time how long the bar was, you're, you would have a bad z-score. So that's, that's just one thing to remember is, is your z-score is not your total picture. You got your values. So here in the yellow box, we got our expected, we got our z-score, and we also got our standard deviation. So combined, those are all the results. Don't forget to change the chart title and the, the, the unit title, or the axis titles. I'm going to copy these three columns, Command C, and I've already put together all the columns to save time once again, and I'm going to paste values. And um, all the values all the way along, or all the columns. So you should, if you want to pause for a second and type them all in, that's great. Um, 
the instructions say use the diameter that was given in the instructions so 2.222 and my error in the diameter was 0 0.05 oops that was actually 0 0.22 and so I can copy those down now my mass and my error the mass I can go back to my sheet one and copy the mass command C command V now the error of the mass I've, I calculated on this other sheet and so I got 0 0.09 make sure you use your own numbers 0 0.09 and I could have copied in there and pasted but I, it rounds to that number now our mass density our mass density is going to be our mass divided by the volume so that's going to be equal to column F divided by parentheses now I'm going to do fine times it by my diameter squared divided by 4. Now if you if you see the little trick here, my diameter squared is really supposed to be the radius squared. And so to get to the, the diameter, it'd be diameter divided by 2. But here I'm going to divide by 4 because I'm squaring it first. And then times it by pi. And you have to close off the brackets. Enter, and I can copy that down. Next, for my error of my mass, is going to equal to this number and times it by a square root. Now, here's where I do my little parentheses trick. There's three different values. There's the, the, the measure value that I had, there's the diameter that was given, and then there's the mass. And so I'm going to do parentheses quantity squared plus parentheses quantity squared plus parentheses quantity squared, and then close it off. You can say, hey, wait, 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 wait. What about pi? Don't we need pi? To, because if we, unless we state every single digit of pi, um, it has uncertainty for the next digit. And I'd be, yes, we could, but let's say we put 3.14, and then we know the next digit's a 1, and so we do 1 over 3.14, and then it's a really small uncertainty, like 1 300th, and so it's small enough to ignore. So next, let's go back into this, and we're going to do the y error divided by uh, the value, and we're going to click in the next one, and we're going to do uh, this, the error in the diameter divided by the diameter. Now here we actually have to include a 2 because it's the rate, the diameter squared. So we have to include the, the power. So we're going to do 2 times that uncertainty. And then finally I'm going to click in the last box and do the error of the mass divided by the mass. And I get 0.12 if I drag it down. I get 0 0.12, 0 0.14, and if I included more digits, you'd see that I have a, every one is different. So because every one is different, we have to do the weighted average of the mass density. And so to do that, I just put in these titles up here. You don't have to put in the units down below it, but it's going to be the measurement divided by the uncertainty squared, or the calculated value divided by the uncertainty quantity squared. And you're going to copy that down the column, and then, the, then this other piece is going to be 1 divided by oops, is equal to 1 divided by the uncertainty quantity squared. So I'm going to copy both those down the column. And over here, I'm going to, I forgot to type in one thing, so command C. Our weighted average and our error of our weighted average, or, or our standard error, I'm going to change that right now too. This is our standard error, because it's an average. And um, What's the formula? It's the sum of column J divided by the sum of column K. And now this time we're not going to copy it down because the weighted average is simply equal to the sum of this column, parenthesis, divided by the sum of this column. And so my weighted average is 2.81. That's a little bit higher than I expect. Well, we'll see. Now my standard error is uh, not 2.81, but instead, um, sorry, it's, it's uh, we have to use our columns that we created. So now that's going to equal the square root of 1 divided by the sum of this column. And then we have to close off the parentheses, and we get that. So once again, we're not going to copy this down, but instead we're going to just decrease the digit. Now, according to the user manual, the true said it was 2.7. And so for a z-score, I'd say equals ABS 
this number minus this number, or you could just type in 2.7 directly divided by this number. And I get a z-score of 2.13. What really happened uh, with 2.13, 2.14, was it really wasn't... Um, let's see, I don't know. It actually, okay, yeah, I remember, I remember, oh, sorry, uh, early morning. So it was a small because all my uncertainties were really small. The uncertainty for the Y error was really small because I measured really carefully. The uncertainty for that was really small. The uncertainty for the, my mass because the numbers I picked were really small. And so all those unsmall uncertainties, I'm off by a Z-score of, of two. And so I think I could, am within uncertainty, but because of my, I, all my measurements were really small, that um, I'm off by a little bit. And that's it. You need to turn in two tables. And you also need to have another bullet about this uh, weighted error that you did. Um, so we report the results there too. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.